Right, yeah. and then yeah. you're talking about the assholes, right? Of the men either, you either, bed, either or, either yeah, or, gotcha. fucking asshole, yeah. fucking vaginas. <laughs> you like them loose, the vaginas. Nice and fucking ripped. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. That is amazing. I'm a sick individual. You sure are. I am. But uh, but we love you. There's nothing normal about me. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Aboriginal Laws. I'm Sugar Bear. Johnny B. I'm Joshua. Thank you for tuning in to the best voice in podcasting. Uh, this man uh, I'd like to introduce uh, to you all uh, is someone I've known for a long time. Uh, I honestly forgot we played football together <laughs> until you reminded me like a half hour ago. You both look like athletes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Fuck you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is, this is the uh. Yeah, <laughs> you know whether you want to admit it or not, this is what peak performance looks like, motherfucker. <laughs> so you're actually getting in great shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on that. You'll be a lineman for sure. I've been on the sugar bear diet. Yes. <laughs> you know what? That hurts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take four, I'll take forty nuggets. Fuck yeah. Forty nuggets. I don't eat forty nuggets. <laughs> Liar. You're getting you're getting the John Big Tree dog. Oh, right, am I? I've seen Johnny. It's like goddamn. I've never eaten forty. Like, no, Honestly, I've never eaten forty either. No nah. wonder why you sleep. I'll cut off at like yeah. thirty five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why we have the matching scars. Yes. <laughs> that's just poor fucking like just that's just native shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. Native bad circulation. Shit, yeah. 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 Okay. Building heart problems. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Being> irregularly. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, I'm glad to finally have him on the show. Someone I've known uh, since we were kids. Uh, my buddy, Adam Oaks. How you doing, brother? Yeah, lean right in on that mic. Yeah, lean oh, right yeah. in. Yeah. 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 It's like really directional. Don't be scared yeah. of it. Don't be, don't be scared of it. That, I, that, that, that checks out. That checks out. What? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what he does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking? Why you you saying me because my friend does a similar joke that uh, yeah that's something we used to do? Is I think that so. what you're implying? I there? think so. Who was the bottom? Sure. <laughs> I was. Uh, just look at he's he's in the fucking red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. You know, he's obviously the boss. Right? So I'm like. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, I've been really excited to have you on because uh, you've been pretty busy since uh, last time I seen you. You care to uh, uh, share with us just a little bit of uh, what you've been up to? Uh, Yeah, so since then. uh, Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's the wire. It's okay. not that. All right. How's that? You know, our producer (laughs) here, uh, every week he can change it after we leave, but uh, he doesn't. Mm Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's accurate. <laughs> that is accurate. It's been You'd rather bro- just jiggle it yeah, every week. Just, yeah. yeah, right in front of your face. That's yeah. just showing you how indigenous I really am. I should have known this was going to be a problem. Just uh, <laughs> but a couple wide shoulder motherfuckers. <laughs> are <next to> each <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to have that camera back, <laughs> back towards the monitor. There. Yeah, don't let the light skin fool you. That's that's indigenous all the way right there. I know he is. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll fix that fucking cable. <laughs> I have seen uh, the. <laughs> the voice actors for that Goholi episode of oh, What really? If. Yeah. He looks like he, he was there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what you been up to, Adam? Uh, so, lately, uh, I've, I work in VFX. So, I uh, since we saw each other last, which was high school, uh, I yeah. uh, went, uh, went to college to, to go into uh, the industry. Ended up out in uh, Los Angeles for about eight years. Uh, working on different shows and stuff like that, um, and then pandemic hit and everything, and everything kind of went remote. And we're like, why, why the hell am I still in uh, LA? It's so fucking expensive. <laughs> so we, uh, my wife and I, moved back to to New York. Um, so yeah, I still work. I still work remote in the industry. Um, so yeah, that's kind of kind of what I do. That's the the quick version of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You didn't pick somewhere warmer to go. <laughs> <laughs> he was somewhere warmer. It's was, expensive, yeah. you yeah. said. <laughs> 100, 110 is warmer than I wanted, anyways. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to make Cher attractive. So that's what he's, what he's been up to. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, though. Uh, so yeah, I worked in um, I worked in what is a uh, previs effects, uh, which is basically like uh, a uh, when a movie's done a lot, especially like Marvel movies. What they'll do is uh, have a company basically do a rough version of all the effects and stuff, um, so they can kind of plan things out. They'll even do uh, animated versions of scenes to see where they want effects. So they'll have even some of the the minor action acting in there. Um, and I worked on a couple shows. Uh, I worked on um, I worked on the first Ant Man, uh, and then worked on uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Um, and then uh, That's from cool. there, <laughs> yeah, I worked on a, a few mm-hmm. other small shows while I was there. Uh, but those were kind of like yeah, the, and you can't even finish the fucking Sasquatch video. <laughs> I know. I, I, and I, he I, fucking made Ant Man fly, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, look what he did with his life after high school. What the fuck's your problem? <laughs> Uh, See what I really with- enjoyed whiskey and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> if we had funny, neutered funny. you at 18, you'd be a billionaire. Yeah, so this is what I could have been if I swore off women and just like yeah. stayed sober. <laughs> I'm just kidding, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, I, funny enough, I actually did work on a couple of the scenes in Ant Man where he is flying. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I worked on uh, the, uh, the helicopter fight scene, mm-hmm. uh, and then I worked on uh, him. A couple of shots of him were uh, flying around on the back of uh, of Antony. So, how long did that take you? Like each scene, like each, each second. Uh, well, <laughs> speak, uh, well, I work in in CG animation, so it can move a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, depending on how detailed you want to be, uh, previous effects are usually <clears throat> a lot a lot quicker. So, right. uh, you know, uh, doing a doing a decent sequence uh, is only going to take me about like a couple of days. Um, different from more recent stuff that I done uh-huh. where uh, where a good scene will take like a week or two. Oh wow! Um, when you're when you're working on more detailed stuff that's going to be in the final product, where as previous stuff, where kind of our stuff is that stuff was handed to a um, uh, studio afterwards to, uh-huh. to kind of be like, here's the template of what you're going to be working off of. Right. So that's generally how that worked. Uh, but I was there. Uh, I I'd, I'd interned there previously. I'd worked on uh, the Poltergeist remake, mm-hmm. and then the uh, the worked on Poltergeist remake um, with Sam Rockwell. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, I worked on that. I worked on uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man two and uh, what's going on uh, the first Ninja Turtle movie that uh, that um, Michael Bay did. So, oh yeah. Yeah. With Megan Fox and uh, Will Arnett. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, but those those but I, I I didn't like that one. The weird and turtles. It, it's it's not it's, like it's not the reason you think. <laughs> it's because it's not until they did the the new one, uh, was it Mutant Mayhem? <clears throat> it's called. Yeah. yeah. Where they were actually teenagers. Right, right. And I'm like, yeah, teenage is in the fucking title. Right. Yeah. And the ones that bu- that, that Michael Bay did that bug me the most is that. Leonardo is Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> and it's like, that's not a teenager. He's like, hello, I'm Leonardo. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? He's supposed to be like And this is Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> and we're turtles. <laughs> Over there is Wee Man. I mean, Raphael. It's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do too much on those. The most, when I, when I interned there, I was mostly on... Poltergeist when I was working there, and then when I went back, I was uh, working on um, uh, Age of Ultron and then Ant Man. Uh, it was funny though because like that was my first you know full professional job. They're like, oh, you're you know it's not just like intern kind of thing. I'm paying me for it. You know they're actually paying me for, mm-hmm. to do this. And, yeah, which is a big thing for me. So I sit down and uh, and I'm like, all right, here's your first shot. And uh, the first thing they give me is a shot of like. Oh yeah, we need a uh, Captain America to be like surfing on these <laughs> crashing cars, and I'm like, oh, and I forgot how to animate for like five minutes. And I was like, oh, what? oh, okay, like I guess I'm doing this now. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I worked there uh, for a bit, and then I left there. Um, it just did some small work here and there, and then ended up at uh, Stupid Buddy, working on Robot Chicken and their show um, Super Mansion. Yeah, uh, I worked on as a as a VFX artist on that. So. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> which was cool because that was the first time I actually like because Seth Green runs that show. Yeah, and uh, 
and I got caught off guard the first time I actually did see Seth Green. Oh, you got to meet these guys yeah. for real, like yeah. work with them. Yeah, I got to work with, like, not, like, constantly directly, like, oh, oh I'm going to go talk to Seth all the time. Like, <laughs> but he did come in one time. I was like, hey, who's this Who's this small guy behind? Oh, my God, that's <laughs> Seth Green. <laughs> he is a little guy. He's, he's, short, he's a short dude. He's, he's a nice dude uh, from, from the times I met him. Um, but uh, it caught me off guard because he was just, like, all of a sudden right behind me. <laughs> oh. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I, think, I think the most I've had, because I've had, you know, talked to him here and there. Uh, when we were in the studio, and I think one time a client had dropped off uh, some kind of fancy candy box thing. Like, oh, it's like a thank you for a show that, like, a commercial or something that we had worked on for them. And uh, and it had, like, some really nice stuff, and then just some bizarre uh, marshmallows in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, like, it's, like, out for everybody, and I'm just sitting there shuffling through them with Seth Green being like, what the <laughs> hell are these? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you do have children someday, or at least you can do it now with, like, if you have any nieces and nephews, you can put on an episode of Family Guy, point at the fat kid, and be like, you hear that voice? He was my boss yeah. for, like, a month. <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. wild yeah. <laughs> so uh, was it the same company that does all of these? Or, or do you, like, is it, like, a freelance, not a freelance, but, like, a contract sort of thing? How's that work? Yeah, uh, I mean, this, the... the uh, this, the VFX world has had a weird thing with with uh, with freelance stuff. There, there was kind of a crackdown not too long ago where they can't. They were like, you can't just like tell say that everybody's a freelancer, so you don't you know have to give them mm-hmm. insurance kind of thing. That um, seems like a great way to exploit people, though. Why? Why would yeah, you do exactly. that? Exactly. Come on, it's <laughs> capitalism. Let's do so it. that uh, that kind of they, there was some more crackdowns on that. Um, some studios are better with it than others. Studio Matt right now uh, is great, and that's not just me being like, "Oh, I work at the studio, I want to keep my job." <laughs> They're actually genuinely they were started by uh, by a few brothers who are all artists, so they have a very artist kind of mindset. Mm. Um, so when I went there, they're very much like, "Hey, like we know how artists think, we know what you want to do, uh, we know how artists want to be treated," kind of thing. They're mm. not we're not gonna underpay you for your work kind of stuff so. mm-hmm. it seems like you get a better product at the end of that and yeah more happier people right yeah and they get way more mm-hmm. work out of it too they mm-hmm. need more people go to them because they make great work mm-hmm. which obviously helps get get more work and you know so they can keep paying these artists uh a lot a lot better than most places um that don't have to you know force a uh force it like a union uh to to get any kind of leeway uh, which has kind of happened more and more around VFX. VFX mm-hmm. isn't really unionized that much. Not uh, yet. <laughs> no, but over, but with the strikes happening and everything, uh-huh. and with uh, AI, a lot of people have kind of, um, especially VFX artists, have been like, "Hey, we should like look at what they're doing and what they're <laughs> trying to do with us." Yeah. Um, and you know, try to make sure they don't you know take the pull the rug out from under. Is us. that something that like yeah? It seems like is that something that AI could do? Yeah, uh, well, some studios have tried to to toy around with it, uh, where they're like, "Oh yeah, we'll uh, um, like Marvel did this uh, recently, and that's kind of why Marvel ended up unionizing the VFX. Marvel VFX mm-hmm. started unionizing. Um, same with Disney VFX unionized uh, was." They had used uh, AI on some stuff. It looks like garbage. It's uh, kind of scary. It's like <laughs> there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Still. Yeah. I it's mean. it's not that good. But the thing is, is that it's better to kind of head it off now before it gets good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that they just were like so brazen to do that, and they're like, oh yeah, look at this, all this AI stuff, and everyone's like, hey, what about all the artists? Yeah. That like you know you got this artwork from that fed into the algorithm for this AI. You know, they're not getting paid for any of this. You know, you're cutting other artists out uh, to make just a cheaper product so you can just keep throwing stuff out there, you know, just vomiting content. Does AI make, uh, like, is it available to, like, you, like, as better tools just to, like, when you're, like, when you're prototype and stuff, you can just yeah. go through, like, motion quicker without... Yeah, know. so, so, um, so with, uh, with... <laughs> What's this? <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry. Sorry, we talked about dicks in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not yeah. that. I'm just I'm I'm trying to listen to Adam, but uh, I'm also ch- kind of like waiting for Adam to acknowledge, be like, "What's that sound?" 
And it's John's breathing. What sound? I didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah. I can hear it. <laughs> and I was kind of hoping to see if he would be like, what is that? I've learned to tune it out, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. My bad. I tune out my own breathing. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 like the kid from Hey Arnold. <laughs> I do too when I sleep. Sometimes I stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I have a CPAP. <laughs> <laughs> do you need that machine? Oh, yeah, I have a CPAP, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, shit. Sure. Yeah, no. I think he needs the machine. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, because uh, because my wife was just like, you, <clears throat> I can't stand you snoring so loud. You're keeping me up all oh. so, mm. <laughs> Not in the fun way. I love being your wife, but, you know, you need to stop. Stop what you do when you sleep. Yeah, yeah. So you just yeah. get her earplugs. <laughs> so you can get your own room and make little, it a fun little, room. Little earplugs are a lot cheaper. You can buy a whole box at like Home Depot for like five dollars than a fucking yeah three thousand dollars seatbelt machine. You would just have like his room, her room, and then the fuck room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My wife did try uh, earplugs, but the problem is, is that I snore like a chainsaw. Oh god! And just like the whole. <laughs> The whole bed kind of rumbles. <laughs> oh, kind of like Josh's jiggly legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So what I was talking about with uh, with AI um, right now, uh, the 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 whole thing with the strikes, and what I think was good in terms of what the artist got, I uh, mean, not writers got, um, is. The ability to use I, AI as a uh, to the artist's discretion. So, like mm-hmm. the, the writer's discretion, they can use AI to just brainstorm, throw ideas out there for themselves, and kind of like take notes off like what AI kind of throws out. Obviously, it's usually not going to be as good as what an art, oh, what a writer, a professional writer can do. So, what the contract is now, uh, what they negotiated was like no studio can make them use it. Uh-huh. Um, it is only for for the artist's discretion for as a, as a personal tool, and um, hopefully that is what's going to be um, kind of established with the artists as well. Because uh, IATSE, which is the big artist union in the industry, is uh, their contract comes up, I think in March, huh. um, and I think they're looking for a similar kind of deal. Yeah, uh, which would be good because you know <clears throat> I personally find AI is a useful tool. Um, when I want to do my own personal art stuff, it's kind of like a fun brainstorming thing. I could throw some words out there, get some ideas, and then make my own artwork based That's off, cool. off mm-hmm. what, it th- what it throws out there. So it's like a, a rapid, like if I get like artist block, it's good. And the same with, with writers, and like you get writer block, um, it kind of helps move things along. Um, but it's a different thing entirely if you're being forced to use it. Yeah. Uh, and then they're real, then like, these studios want to try to cut people out and be like, oh, you know. Well, ultimately, that's what they want, right? That's what they, they don't want have to do. pay people. Yeah, they could buy this thing for twenty grand or whatever, and then yeah, never pay another dude again. Yeah, and but like well, the problem is, is that <clears throat> the big two big issues. One is AI is really not as smart as people like to think uh-huh. it is. Um, and uh, the other issue is uh, uh, AI has a lot of pulling from other people's work. Yeah. Um, so a lot of artists are, uh, are fine, a fine CA, uh, CA, some AI art where they'll see their own signatures kind of faded in the art uh-huh. because part of their artwork was blended in. It's just like aggregating data, right? And just yeah. like smooshing it all together. And yeah. And so yeah. basically it's the biggest issue is like, oh, this is just basically plagiarism with extra steps. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> smart, better plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's it's kind of like what the issue is, is like you don't want people using AI art and then claiming it as their own because a lot of times it's built off other people's work. Yeah. Hmm. So how'd you go from Will's friend to successful? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Was he like a nerd in high school? Was he like the nerdy computer guy or the art guy or not you? Oh me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've always been big into art, so <clears throat> yeah. it was kind of like my outside of of football and and the band that we had back in high school no way <laughs> hey you guys think about getting the band back together no no <laughs> missing an opportunity no, huh? i think he's doing fine without <laughs> it yeah. 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 My, my fingers don't want to want to work with me anymore no <laughs> so what was it like uh like actually cashing a check that said marvel on it well, I were you like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, is that I never actually worked directly for Marvel. I worked mm. with studios that mm-hmm. that uh, I was uh, that they outsourced to. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so like, with, cause there's not a lot of studios that do pre-visualization and stuff. So I was at one of the studios that do that. So, uh, so none of my work actually said Marvel, but I was paid through Marvel. So technically, right, right, because right. it's part of their show and then they, they're the ones who kind of, uh, bankroll that the whole thing. So you did give Marvel the drugs, but you had to go through a middleman. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you get your name in the credits for that, or is it is that, whatever that VFX one house? That one I didn't. That's there's credits is a really weird thing. Uh-huh. Um, I've heard. Yeah. I don't know it myself, but I've heard. Cre- credits get really, really uh, uh, bizarre. Yeah. In terms of like who gets credited and, and whatnot. So uh, my main credits are all on, on Robot Chicken and, and Super Mansion. Which is better than the last few Marvel movies. <laughs> I mean, I haven't worked on the last few Marvel movies. I have worked on a lot of uh, DC TV shows. Okay. So I worked uh, at a studio after after working there. I worked at a studio uh, on... Where after I worked on Robot Chicken, um, I worked at a studio that did... Um, that I did like the Flash TV show, Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the most recent show I animated on was, uh, was Doom Patrol. Oh, wow. Um, and then... Uh, because of all the strikes and stuff, I ended up having to leave there, and then I'm at the current studio now. Oh, okay. So, so what did you do during that? Just like <clears throat> other shows or <laughs> advertising or uh, at what at the other studio? when everybody was on strike. Oh, uh, so uh, the studio I'm at now, um, I'm not doing animation per se. I'm working with artists. Uh, I work on more of a technical side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I work in uh, what's called render management so i just work with uh with finished like rendered plates and stuff and make sure that they get sent to the right people uh so well make sure that they're 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 not broken and then yeah. let people know hey there's something wrong with the shot or whatever uh you know you can fix this before it gets sent to somewhere else um so that's generally what i do right now it's a it's a pretty uh safe place to be during mm-hmm. all this uh not like entirely safe, but like safe enough that like I knew at a time when the when the uh, the strikes were about to happen, I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in on this work for a bit uh, before I hop back into animation uh, because I know that's gonna be a uh, bit of a train wreck mm-hmm. coming up, um, and you know it invariably was. <laughs> so <laughs> now you're you're talking about a lot of these animation uh, studios and groups and stuff. Uh, really um, wanting to unionize and protect their workers. Now, what are some of the, um, you know, a selection, if you would, like, you know, of isolated incidences where you'd be like, well, that's what led to what they like. You know, when we were on our way here, I brought up um, Sausage Party. Yeah. And we know how um, those workers were infamously just treated, like, badly. I didn't watch that movie. I didn't. I'm not talking about the movie, yeah. but it did get a lot of press on how okay. the animators, you know, were like. So would you say, uh, what were a lot of the things that led up to that? Uh, well, I mean, it's kind of been an on and off thing <laughs> for the past decade. Um, I think one of the big breaking points uh, that even got people even thinking about VFX more more seriously was what happened with Life of Pi, mm. um, because they screwed all their all like, right, a lot of their right. artists. Over. Oh, really? Yeah, and a, and a whole studio got shut down. Yeah, they bankrupted the studio. Yeah, holy for that time. They, yeah, they bankrupted an entire studio uh, because of that movie, and that's when people are like, "We need to unionize," uh, and then that got fumbled super mm. hard. Uh, then you really go anywhere, and I think what happened recently. With all the stuff with streaming, things bouncing from one hand to another, people like other companies trying to take over other companies, mm-hmm. uh, canceling shows out of nowhere, um, it got to the point where people were like, people were like, "Hey, we need to like watch ourselves," especially with AI coming up, and that's kind of what led into mm-hmm. the whole thing with uh, with the um, with with the writers first, and then the actors. Uh, the actors are different. Thing with AI, that's kind of like uh, like what we were talking about earlier with when you mentioned uh, with uh, voiceover work. Um, they want to use they wanted to use like uh, AI generated voices of like dead actors without like the permission of this. Yeah, yeah. that that is it's creepy. I don't like that. That's spooky. Yeah, like bringing back you know AI generated Robin Williams dialogue for yeah. the genie. Are you saying I could just copy Will's voice and then? 
Yeah. <laughs> and you would never have to do it with me again. Right. I just, hope that works out for type, you. Just type it yeah. in. And, yeah. It was that they wanted to like scan on. I'm hoping, you know, maybe it'll write better jokes. I'll sell your, I'll sell your voice on Fiverr. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> for only $5. $5 for 100 words. That's how it's usually going. All right. right. I hope, yeah. Let's get this going. <laughs> Go get the gun <laughs> and sell the pictures. <laughs> so yeah, he really likes uh, death footage and shit like that from like the war and like the cartel stuff. You know, what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know much about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my buddy here, he can just watch that shit for like three, four hours. Mm. You know, just like, I, I, I sleep great at night. <laughs> I got, I got you do. Even with the apnea, you know, yeah. as soon as I fuck with it, yeah. I have dreams that I'm holding the camera <laughs> while somebody's getting their head chopped off. Camera in one hand, your other hand in your yeah, pants. Yeah, no, like I'm holding the camera and I'm eating like a fucking hamburger. Yeah. That's fucking amazing right there. Yeah, yeah. Like I sleep great. I can watch yeah. hours of people dying. And be there might be something wrong with me. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, he can watch Funky Town and then go to bed. Just be like, yeah, that was fine. <laughs> yeah, what attracted you to animation? How'd you get there? <laughs> That's an odd segue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I got a jackknife back into this. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just hammer this back into like. We can talk more about union stuff because it's so exciting there you go <laughs> it is you know are, are you really hoping someday you get the call for like south park studios you're like i'm there <laughs> oh uh i working with south park would be a, a nightmare for me <laughs> but not that like some people who work on south park love it mm-hmm. uh, that is a uh that is a intense schedule that they run on uh, for um, those of you that want to learn more of that, you can check out the documentary Six Days to Air. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, they do some, they do some great work, but it's one of those things that, that is, when you work uh, work on South Park, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a... Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's a method so Johnny acting. V wants the job. <laughs> Sign me up. He's like, <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Butters uh, goes ice skating and... <laughs> Oh, apparently, I give, it. apparently I give off that vibe because I got offered powder for a ride earlier. Oh, really? Yeah. I gave somebody asked me for a ride. I'm like, all right. You want some cocaine? I'm like, no. And it wasn't even that yeah, far. I'm like, no, no, yeah. no like, I'll take cash, though. Yeah. You know, that's usually how this works. Yeah. Well, maybe they're a listener. Since they, like, it comes up every fucking like, show. Like, maybe, maybe if I was probably about 15 years ago, I would have took your cocaine. Yeah. Uh, at what point are we just posing? Can he, can he, I want him to pull up some of his best photoshopping. And I want you to just shit on it and be like, that is fucking bad. Oh, no, Will's always impressed with what I can do with Canva and a fucking free program. Yeah, I, in like I, 10 I, minutes while taking a shit. He's basically dangling keys. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I, I want you to look at it and be like, awful. Shit. Like, yeah. what is this fucking, who the fuck you think you are? If I spent a few more days on stuff and had several thousand more in the uh, tools. It would be the, the Simon Cowell of Photoshop. Yeah, right. If that's what you need to think, man. Yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, I am curious about that because... You have worked in studio, but then you have done a lot of remote. Mm -hmm. Now, how much is the software and how much is the computer that you would need to be able to keep up with um, what you can do in studio with their stuff and what you can uh, do at home to match the quality? Well, uh, so I don't um, I don't pay for that software uh, because what basically how remotes usually work is uh, you are given a. you're assigned a remote computer that you log into. Yeah. Um, so I'm basically streaming my computer that's in the studio. They mm-hmm. have their own bank of computers that have all the specs and software and everything that they need. Um, so I'm basically streaming into my my desktop what? at the studio. It's probably like a whole data center, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's they have like, a, like the whole yeah. data centers and yeah. stuff that we, we stream It's like hundreds into. of computers. So it's kind of like some kind of avatar shit? Yeah. <laughs> where you're just using the thing at home, but really you're powering the computer? Like, yeah. Oh my wow. god! Yeah, yeah the, the thing's basically his Bitcoin mining thing is like similar to. Shh, <laughs> great, now you gotta kill him. <laughs> well, it didn't belong to him. He just used to work there. Yeah, I've been retired from that business for a long time. Well, then burn it down, fucker. <laughs> okay. It's cold, man. Have you seen that plant? Yeah. 
That's yeah. too bad. Speaking of yeah. cold, they're going to be making hydrogen over there. So. Oh, yeah. nice. It'll, it'll warm up They really soon. loved Oppenheimer, right. didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what, do we just need some space? That's it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're doing remote. What do you, what, like, is there a particular software suite you work with? Or is there, like, you look at different tools that are out there depending on whatever the job is? Um, so it depends. So. Right now, I work with a specific software called Deadline. Um, that's just for the the render management side of things. Um, why is my phone going off even though I silenced it? <laughs> uh, it's probably the weather update. Get your ass home. Yeah. <laughs> Syracuse is under four feet of snow. <laughs> guess who's sleeping at Will's house tonight? <laughs> I guess we can have a long podcast. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yep. there we go. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so um, I work with Deadline, uh, which is kind of like the the standard across um, a lot of studios is uh, Deadline for uh, for render management. Um, in terms of animation, though, uh, I, it's usually Adobe, oh, not Adobe, um, Autodesk. Mm-hmm. So I work with uh, Animate and Maya, uh, okay. typically. Um, there's other people who work in other stuff, depending on on the type of work that kind of plugs in with Maya, um, or you have the effects guys. Oftentimes, who work in Houdini, which is an incredibly intense uh, VFX software that I don't even kind of know how to use. Um, mm-hmm. Those guys also get paid way more than me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, my main my main work has basically been with uh, with Maya and um, and uh, Deadline, depending on what job I'm working in. Almost sounds like a trade. You have to learn how to use this tool. You have to spend this much time and money to learn to use this particular tool. Yeah. <laughs> like a welder. Yeah. So like like what I work in now is oftentimes a lot of people the, a lot of people in the industry see it as like a an entry level job. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like it can be an entry level job, but you want someone who's good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have you know, I have quite a bit of experience. I worked with somebody who's who's done this as a as a career for years. Um, and I learned a lot from her and then I kind of been using that kind of similar, um, similar style of working in, in render management when I do work in that. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like a lot of people can do it and you can kind of like pick up, like a lot of studios like to pick up just a, a, um, like a, a college student or whatever and be like, Oh, this is kind of an entry level mm-hmm. job into the industry. Um, but not a lot of studios understand the importance of the job mm-hmm. um past couple studios i have done worked with that uh they do understand that which is why uh we actually get paid more than, than a lot of places would pay for, for mm-hmm. a render manager so um so that that's that's kind of my my work now um and then there's my animation side of things um which is entirely in my which is just kind of a standard across uh all, yeah all studios that work with with animation other other anima- animation um, software has showed up. Uh, Blender has kind of showed up because it's pretty free. It's yeah, free. I've seen Blender out there. I've messed around with it a little bit, but yeah, Blender's cool. No it's, patience. It's uh, it's it's uh, free, and they've updated it over years, so it's it's a really like, yeah. nice software. Um, and then after like, if you make a certain amount of profit on it, then you pay back to the the company. Um, and the same way, thing that works with. Um, uh, Unreal, the Unreal Engine mm-hmm. does the same thing. When you're working with Unreal Engine, um, it's uh, it's free uh, until you're making a certain amount of money. Oh yeah. If you're making a small amount of money, they're gonna harp you over it. But I think mm-hmm. if you're making over ten grand, they take a, a small percentage of that. That's a smart way to do things. You get people to use your shit. And yeah. You get them hooked on your drug. <laughs> yeah, that's basically that's which which I think is great. Yeah. There's just a lot of studios that have like Adobe has done this where they've. Adobe and Autodesk have been like, how about you just sign up for our ridiculous subscription plan? I hate it. I hate it, too. I hate it. <laughs> I, I haven't been using Adobe products because of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just want to buy it once, and, like, I don't need a new edition of Audition. It's fucking... Yeah. The one from 10 years ago is fine. Yeah, I, I, that's why I don't use Adobe either anymore. Um, I Like, the only time I've ever used Adobe is if I'm making, um, making a, a demo reel. I'll get a one month trial for like uh, After Effects. Oh yeah, or Premiere, and uh, put together my my reel, and then be like, all right, I don't I don't need this anymore. Right. Uh, because it's a ridiculous amount of money for something yeah. that you don't need to keep paying for. Yeah, we use Audition at the radio station because it's 
fast and it's like easy yeah. and I, I get shit done real fast but we don't use it for our podcast because it's expensive you need to buy the whole suite yeah i uh like it's with with uh, i don't use photoshop anymore so i use um uh Krita. okay it's a um it's more like the because when i use photoshop it was usually for like the painting side of things mm-hmm. and Krita works the same same way okay and they even have and it's free and it even has a uh, has their own um has like a, a, a like a, a startup kind of like uh 2d software on it 2d animation software oh right on um i've i've kind of dabbled into it a little bit but i've used it kind of used it for like sketching and stuff is um, that on windows or mac or what do you work when, with? i work on windows. Oh, windows i have a custom windows machine back yeah there, um that i can work on my own stuff separately right um but uh yeah it's i've i've i was like i'm not gonna pay fucking for Photoshop yeah. anymore. It's, it's just stupid. <laughs> I, for what we need, I've been using Paint.net because it's free. Yeah, but Crit is. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, Crit, Crit is really good. It's uh, of the of the free softwares, uh, especially for for like painting and stuff like that. Yeah. Crit is is fantastic. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I checked it out. Mm-hmm. I don't. We. I mean, we just do like stupid Instagram shit and you know yeah. posters and whatever. But I I can. Almost make a circle on like Microsoft Paint. <laughs> That's pretty good. Microsoft Paint's really hard to use. Yeah, make, make, Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft Paint is a pain in the ass to yeah. work with. Yeah, I don't know why they make it that way. No, think uh, it hasn't changed in. No, they, you're still using the Windows 95 version of yeah. Microsoft Paint. They it's just weird. Made, they just made the tab look nicer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you think about it, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Why don't they have layers and like standard? Like, are they still using bitmaps? <laughs> It feels like it because it's just like the most, the most rudimentary stuff. I've seen some people though who, who can make like super realistic. Yeah, stuff autistic people. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my! Uh, yeah. Savants. It's that computers. Thing. There's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I have a question. Since you've been in the biz for about a decade, better part of a decade, so. Um, when you see like uh, Disney Animation Studios uh, actually like uh, trying to uh, create a software that better understands like how human hair behaves or even water, mm-hmm. or then you see what um, you know what James Cameron can do with the motion capture thing with the most recent uh, uh, was Avatar: Shape of Water. Yeah. Uh, what is the most uh, like, uh, in your opinion, the most amazing like? Uh, like I say, achievement uh, on the technical side with the animation uh, thus far. Uh, the, it's hard to because like there's constantly new stuff showing yeah. up mm-hmm. all the time. Um, like I I knew a friend uh, that was working on the uh, working on the stuff that made clothes for uh, for Zootopia, <clears throat> um, and I got to go visit him in the studio one time to see see them yeah. working on mm-hmm. and how how they get clothes to look so realistic. <clears throat> Low realistically, um, I think the big one has been hair because hair is such a is such a weird thing to work with. Yeah. If you don't get it right, you're like you yeah. notice it. Yeah, <laughs> it looks fucking scary. Yeah, and I or think hands. the people who've been who've been on that the most <laughs> is uh... <laughs> like you ever go back and like look at the original Toy Story and <laughs> yes. you look at like Andy's mom's hair. Or yeah. like Sid's hair, and then you look at hair now, and you're like, "Fuck, they got so much better." You know? Yeah, it was, that's what, that's why. Like, if you watch yeah. uh, The Incredibles two, there's a there's a part oh, where uh, mm. where Violet is blow drying her hair. Yeah, and they did that entirely to show off. That right. was just because they got so good at it mm-hmm. uh, that they're like, "We're just gonna do this <laughs> because Pixar they're just, fuck they're you just to... dick measuring at this yeah. point." Yeah, that's basically <laughs> like they're like, "Look how awesome our technology is." <laughs> <laughs> there was no real reason uh, to do that other than the fact that, like, "Hey, look, we've made this cool technology. And it's really cool to show off, and mm-hmm. like, it is really impressive." Um, so they like Pixar has done wild stuff in terms of hair. Um, Making water mm-hmm. really good, uh, believable, is its own thing as well. Uh, same, same with like general effects like fire and water. Uh, water is probably the the most obvious of them um, because you can make a decently uh, believable fire effect if you're if you're good enough. Um, water effects uh, are very obvious when mm. they're done wrong. Mm. If yeah, they're, if they're not composited and right, because you have because unlike fire, there is. I mean, like fire will have is it's emanating light, so 
you don't have to worry about how light reacts with it oh, as yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas water is bending light all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and there's a very specific way it does that. And if you don't do it correctly, the eye will catch on to it pretty quick. Um, even if you, even if you're not like trained in it, you look at it and be like, "Oh, that's there's something wrong with this. I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. or why that water is moving weird." Um, it's just because the like the light doesn't move right, or they don't have the it doesn't like move with the correct uh, like viscosity. Um, it's funny how we get it on some level. It's weird. Yeah, it's an evolutionary yeah. thing. The yeah. hunter gatherer, like yeah. you know, when you realize something is not correct. It's like, you know, there's also a term for people. Like, Valley. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when they like when they see uh, something that shouldn't be alive but having human features, like when they made a... Uh, obviously, they make sex robots now, but when they... <laughs> yes, I knew I was going to get some laughter from this. But before they did that for that reason, they were making robots that did look, you know, almost yeah. human-like. And your brain kind of just like... Yeah, it's the uncanny valley. That's yeah. that's the yeah. that's where where it's like you can have something super stylized, mm-hmm. and then if you try to make it more real, the more real it looks until you get to the point where it's hyper realistic that it's almost indistinguishable. Um, if you try to make something look real, you're gonna your eye, the eyes are gonna be like, there's something wrong with this. I don't know what's wrong with it. The you know because the biggest issue, especially with faces, is uh-huh. the biggest issue is that. There's so many muscles in the in the face that right. move in a very specific way that even when they do um, do the the face capture where they have like the dots all over the face yeah. and the camera hook up to their face, um, that will work really well because they have the dots to kind of like follow the the muscle movements. Uh, but the problem is, is that there's so many other micro movements in those muscles mm-hmm. that your eye naturally picks up on. Yeah, that if the if the if uh, the animation doesn't match that, your eye is gonna be like, what's, right. what's wrong with that? Well, it's like Tron Legacy, yeah. and they de-aged Jeff Bridges. That yeah. it's like <laughs> fucking weird looking. Yeah, it, but, and I like that movie. I really like that movie. I wish to make more of those. <laughs> Honestly, when I first saw it, it didn't bug me yeah. because he was supposed to be mm-hmm. the computer version. Mm-hmm. Well, it's in the real world that he's the way right. It works. But when I, yeah. Uh, yeah, when yeah. he was first talking to yeah. his son in the beginning. Yeah, yeah I and like like yeah. uh, I know Lucas uh, has worked on that, and they've done a good a good amount of stuff. So like uh, yeah. ILM has worked on a lot of that stuff with some of the Star Wars stuff. It looks a little better with the Luke and the yeah. It's still weird. It's still yeah. a little weird. Yeah, yeah. they they've they've done a lot of work specifically with Luke's character uh, in when they when they've showed him um, when they first showed him, it looked a little on and off. Uh, later on, it started getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Tarkin looks weird. What's that? Tarkin. They did it with Tar- Tarkin. Yeah. The, the funny thing was that, so the, the there's a trick you can see when it looks really good. Uh-huh. And a lot of time when it look, when Tarkin looks really good, it's in the most harsh lighting. Oh. Because your mind uh, will will kind of forgive a lot of uh, things when there's harsher lighting. Right. Uh, so if there's harsher lighting on something, uh, you're, you're only looking at the more contrasty stuff. If something's evenly lit... Uh, then you can yeah, see yeah. every one of the micro movements. Oh. Yeah, it's the Marlon Brando thing. Yeah, that's why they kept his fat ass in the dark. Kept him in the dark. <laughs> Apocalypse now. Oh, fuck. He's fuck like, you do our movie. He's skinny. He's, he's the right way. Fucking eating out there to jungle. Yeah, he's villagers. Like, You're on now, and boy, something about grocery clerks. <laughs> yeah. Was that? Was that? The, I think of the. Uh, was it the the commercial he did where he's like trashed. He shit faced through the whole thing, and like they Marlon do. Brando? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a, there's an old wow. commercial where there's like several outtakes where he's just shit faced, and he can't get his lines right. Nice. And I think it might have been for a wine, but he uh. kept drinking the wine through the whole thing, so he was just trashed, and then starts yelling at the crew. <laughs> I want to look this up. I love old commercials, yeah. by the way. <laughs> They were probably pissed because it probably cost two million just yeah. for him to show up. Yeah, right. Yeah, and he's yeah. just sitting at this fancy dinner table and just yelling at people. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's not at all what you're supposed to say. He's like, I don't care how Marlon Brando. That's <laughs> what I want. <laughs> so, since you're naming off uh, some of the most difficult things in your uh, profession uh, to master, like you know, you said skin, hair. Um, Fire. What other parts do you collect? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just saying. Like, what, what, what do you take pride in? Be like, you know, I have definitely, you know, uh, I've mastered that skill. It's like I fucking, 
The guy kick ass at making fire. I have the Shadow Lord. I uh I don't I think maybe it's just imposter syndrome, but I don't think I'm good at anything. <laughs> There's things I've I've gotten better at. Okay, well, fine. What <laughs> when you point it out, be like, you know, and someone was just like, you know what, Adam, that's really good dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Well, I I think the last like I character animation stuff stuff I've I've gotten better with, and that's kind of where my my main goals have been. Yeah. Is in character animation. Um, I did some stuff where or people were dancing, and I did some good good dancing. You know, uh, of of. Uh, where it was mostly just for like background characters dancing and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I think that was kind of some of the better work I've done. I've also done uh, people flying and like mm. people like floating and flying and stuff like that um, and getting those motions. Um, but I'm constantly, constantly uh, referring to um, this book that most animators will have called The Animator Survival Kit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, uh, it was written by, uh, by, uh, this, uh, animator who has, who was in the business for years and years and years. Um, I can't think of his name right now. <laughs> I feel awful that I can't think of his name right I'll now. I'll look it up. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but he means a lot to you. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but he's, <laughs> but like he, cause he worked at Disney. He worked with Don Bluth. Mm-hmm. He worked on, uh, on Richard uh, Williams, Richard Williams. That's yeah. Don Bluth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's worked with all those guys and he made uh, uh, the animator survival kit, which just has breakdowns of basically any kind of uh, animation movements that you need, like how someone walks, how they run, how different characters mm-hmm. in different movements walk and run, uh, how to animate different styles of characters, um, how to make something more stylistic compared to more realistic, um, and that that is such a like I have my my uh animator survival kit is just filled with sticky notes Mm -hmm. sticking out of it of being like hey here's like how this like specific kinds of walks and runs and how to move arms and so i have like marked them all out so i can quickly run like flip to them because they're ones that that i use most often um so you know i it's it's one of those i constantly kind of learning uh crafts where you're never like the best at it um it's, there's there are people where I look at them like I don't know how you can get any better, and they'll also say the same thing. Like I'm still not, you know, as good as I want to be. So it's just kind of a, there's no one out there. That's, I'm the fucking best. <laughs> there so there are <laughs> there are people like that. There there are people who who do have that kind of ego, uh, and most of the time they're insufferable to work with. Yeah, he's that uh, he's that skateboardy guy, that douchebag from like Hackers. <laughs> he's like the only guy who's like. <laughs> And it's like, dude, you're in an office. What are you doing? Oh yeah, the plague. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Call me the plague, not now Eugene. Now, what's the style of animation that, um, like, for you, that's probably just like the, like the most fascinating, like, to you? Like, for me, I always love the style and the way, uh, like, rotoscope looks. Like, um, for the the first uh, instance of rotoscope was that ghost dancing. I think it was for Betty Boop. Uh, yep. And uh, also, same, Ralph, same Ralph Bakshi that. just loved the shit out of uh, Rotoscope, and I loved his movies and stuff. So. His stuff is great. He's also yeah. an incredibly weird guy, which is yeah. some, some sounds, of the best sounds people. Sounds about right. In, well, you know what, man? <laughs> so, so, some of the best people in this in this industry you'll, you'll meet, and you'll be like, you're an incredibly bizarre person, but I think you have to be a little off to... Get, be as good as some of these people. Are. Well, look at that John Chris Lucy He ended up being a fucking pervert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know, he's the Ren and Stimpy guy. Yeah. No way. That guy, was, that guy was a pervert? No, I can't tell just by looking no, at the like, shit. No, like, he was yeah. like a pedo. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. So, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't get that, that close to uh, uh, Nickelodeon, did you? <laughs> I never worked with Nickelodeon. Good. Ever. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah, there's an awful lot of weirdness to it, that, that whole crew. Yeah. But, yeah. No, but I, yeah, so what's a, what's a style of animation that, you know, to you is your favorite? Uh, so for me, it's hard. It's, I, I'm all over the map with, when it comes to the styles of animation. So, like, yeah. it's, it's, uh, I'll, I'll enjoy a certain style and then kind of switch up and be like really into another style. Um, it's different from what I work on um, because what I work on is a lot of uh, realistic stuff. I'm doing VFX uh, where I'm doing stuff like 
character animation of a character, or I'm doing um, what's called match moving, in which I'm, it's kind of like rotoscoping, um, but I'm rotoscoping that a copy of that of that uh, that character. So like the actor is still there, but there's going to be an effect on that ca- on mm. that actor. So to make it believable, <laughs> I have to basically match their movements exactly with a model that looks like them. So I get like uh, so like um, for example, I worked on Doom Patrol, and when I was working on Doom Patrol, I had done some match move stuff with like Robot Man, and uh, I get the model of Robot Man and stuff, and then. I'm animating over, uh, over, uh, Brendan Fraser playing Robot Man because there's gonna be like you know he's gonna be hit with some kind of lightning effect yeah. or something like that, or some other or if there's gonna be like smoke that hits him and the smoke needs to blow over him realistically. Right. I have to animate out or fire or something. Yeah, like something, something like that. So basically, I I'm match moving the the movements over over him uh, and or other characters. So that they can put the effects over. It. Right, that's so, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a that's a lot of that's like a the bread and butter of VFX work is match moving um, so that uh, that other effects can be put on top of it, and then you get every once in a while you can get work on a full animated shot, uh, which is really cool, um, which I have done uh, working on on uh, Two Patrol as well, where I've worked on uh, like Negative Man and. The negative spirit and stuff that flies out of them mm-hmm. and everything, um, where I got to animate that stuff, which is which is really fun. Um, in which case, I don't have to do all match move, um, unless it's kind of. Kind of uh, I will do some match move on uh, negative man's chest, so that there's the so when the spirit comes out of him, they can have the effect coming around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I stuff do- like that. That's the general how, how how a lot of VFX artists work. Are you going like frame by frame or? How's that happening? Or is there like does the software is it able to follow it or both? <laughs> both. It it kinda it kinda depends on um so a lot of times if there's big arcing movements, uh mm-hmm. you can you can get away with uh with having keyframes kind of spread out mm-hmm. uh with with hitting the big poses and then smoothing the poses out uh in the software um in between that that the software will fill in. Um uh, what, what's up? I'm sorry, I was just laughing at him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't pay attention. <laughs> I am, I am like really into your. Story, yeah, he but... does that. He does that a lot. <laughs> Mid somebody's conversation. Yeah. yeah, my legs just bounce. I don't interrupt. Well, it's just, yeah. I'm not interrupting. I just glance over at Johnny and he looks funny, so I. Check him. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You're gonna realize I'm the calmest motherfucker in this room too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh but yeah so like uh there's the there's that kind of stuff or if there's um intricate movements mm-hmm. uh well i'll have to go like frame by frame um like if if it's a close-up on somebody's hand and they're like grabbing something, uh-huh that's like stuff, tony stark doing the yeah like oh, flippity do with his yeah fake computer that stuff that stuff will 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 have to be more frame by frame <laughs> if you're like working with fingers themselves because mm-hmm. that's a it's a more difficult thing to you know when i just saw you do that it definitely brought up another question i'm gonna ask after so you know, <laughs> keep, going, keep going yeah oh, that's, that's about it you sure yeah <clears throat> okay so <laughs> <laughs> there are animators that actually have to like work on like porn <laughs> like especially when they do like porn parodies yeah yeah like, they're like this is not pirates of the caribbean yeah <laughs> like there's a guy who has to make like a animated ship yeah so so there, I, <laughs> I know i know yeah i thought of that when you're just like <laughs> i'm like wait porno <laughs> i was gonna say he's gonna talk about fingering and i was like no mm-hmm. way <laughs> maybe technically what uh i mean so I didn't. I never got into that part of the, the industry. Yeah, but do you think they're it. paid well? They're paid incredibly well, but that's just because you have to look at dicks for you know, eight hours a day. <laughs> I know some people do that for free. Yeah, <laughs> but like, like, but like, getting it's it's different. For, it's different from like when it's a work thing. Yeah. It's like you have to stare at this yeah. dick. And you have to stare at like these body parts for hours on end. It's like watching the way the sausage is made. <laughs> yeah, it's, it like it loses it lose the lore. So people who have worked in that, I've heard about. People and that's like, why you get the call back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, like I have seen people who who 
I don't know anybody personally, but I do know about people who have kind of dropped out of that after doing that for like a couple of months. They're like, this is, I can't do that. Like, I'm tired of well. these people yeah. to animals. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, you see the scene right there where he's like really pounding her in the ass and then the ghost appears in the background. <laughs> That's my ghost. Yeah. He's like, damn. I, I made her and look like a cat. that shit broke my spirit for a week. <laughs> I made her look like a cat person. Uh, so the, <laughs> the, the closest... Uh, uh, Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. 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 fucking thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, the closest I got to that was when I did work on Robot Chicken. Uh, I had done a few scenes with uh, with naked puppets. Yeah. And one of them was uh, was a whole uh, sequence with uh, with um, <laughs> which one? It's it's with uh, with uh, Michael Bay uh, trying to uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, propose a new. Um, uh, Transformers movie and he just walks in with like a gigantic prehensile dick and he's just like talking the whole time and he's like dr- like writing things with his dick and then like makes a martini and drinks from it and then smokes a cigar with it <laughs> and uh, and, the, and so I had to go through and uh, and basically uh, creatively blur it out uh, so that you can still read the joke that it's a dick but you can't straight up see it um, the downside is that it's over a table that was reflective. So not only was I doing that, oh, no. I had to ref- I had to blur it out on the table as well. <laughs> so so you've actually had to pixelate a, a penis, like yeah. a fake penis. Yeah, a puppet dick. <laughs> 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 I have a friend who still has the dick, and I think she has it hanging in the in the mirror of her car. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's just this. It's like a whole because it's. It was connected to him, but it had his own controls <laughs> for for the stop motion for the stop motion. Robot chick is fucking funny. Yeah, I think it's a funny shit. Dude, that would be the first thing on top of my resume. Like, <laughs> puppet dick. <laughs> 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 season seven, episode uh, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Almost season eight. Almost there you go. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So uh, so that that actually that that took forever because they couldn't figure out how they wanted it blurred. Um, and this was actually oh, one of the few times where uh, Seth Green had saved me because they kept because all the other producers kept like being like no do it like this so I'd redo the whole thing like no nah, I don't really like it. do it like this because I had done it one way and they're like oh let's change it do this other thing and I spent like a week and a half re re blurring <laughs> out this dick and then Seth uh, had come back from uh, from I think he was shooting something or, or something else, other project he was working on. And he was looking over, and he's like, "That's fine. Your original one was fine. Why don't we just use that?" And I was like, "Oh my god! Like, <laughs> otherwise, I would have been." Yeah, oh, that's... I worked on that. So. <laughs> oh my god, that's your dick. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my puppet dick that I blurred out. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Can mayor? Yeah. So you'll you'll see that. Yeah. <laughs> so Adam, Adam, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, so like I, I know it's funny, but whatever. But like you, you, you made something, and like millions of stoners <laughs> yeah. at like eleven thirty at night laughed their tits. I have no idea shit. how much work went into it. Yeah. yeah, and I added, I added in the smoke and fire effects there too. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. It, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> You made that. He's, he's giggling at your creation. And I believe that's what Michael Bay does. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was a uh, that was uh, a wild time uh, working on that. But like, because like, it's not just that, but like, because the he's also on a rig that holds holds the character up while he's walking and everything. Mm-hmm. So you have to paint that out on top of adding all the other effects. Oh right. That. What is so, like a green screen? Or now, something? are they still doing stop motion? Is that how they make that show? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's funny too because when I worked there, uh, when you said the whole thing with stoners, there's, uh, it was, um, I worked on that show and I worked on their show Super Mansion, which was uh, was Brian Cranston's show that he did, mm-hmm. um, where uh, it's like a bunch of like uh, shitty superheroes uh, who all live together, and uh, and. Uh, so that one we had to be way more precise with how clean the the effects work was, uh, whereas we made we made jokes about Robot Chicken and we're like everyone's too high to care about if you get perfect, <laughs> like like we like it was like you didn't want like put produce crap, 
But if something was slightly off for a couple of frames, they're like, it's for watching. It was good enough. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, is it like, does the joke read? Good. That's what we want. It's not where where because that's all Robot Chicken was. It's like it's all sketches. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's basically bang bang, really fast, funny yeah. stuff. So no one's sitting there staring at you know trying to think about the show or anything like that. Whereas as uh, as uh, Super Engine, um, you actually had people who were um, you had a whole storyline and everything to it. Um, so all the characters had to have a very specific um, had to have a very specific um, level of production to the effects. It, it seems like people are used to stop motion. It's always a little bit wonky, even like, yeah. even like uh, back in the day when that's all there was. It's, you can always like see little finger marks or, yeah. you, you know, the cl- whatever the material they're using or it moves weird. And so we kind of just accept it. Yeah, and they, they've they've have a, like you can make stop motion super super clean, uh, especially with the advent of uh, of three D printing. Um, like Leica does that where they'll 3D print tons of different faces and oh, stuff wow. to make things super clean. Um, but it's not the, it's not, there's, there's a different kind of quality between different styles of mm-hmm. stop motion. Hmm. Mm. I just recently watched uh, Wendell and Wild the other day with my kids. Uh, and that was uh, Henry Selick yeah. and uh, Jordan Peele. Oh yeah. You know, they did a, uh, I, I don't know what the fuck just happened. Oh. Yeah, no, I thought they looked great. I mean, obviously, um, you can tell like the where the face and the mouthpiece divide, like uh-huh. where they change mouths on some of the puppets. But uh, yeah, everything still looked really mm. smooth, and uh, I liked it. It was really good. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I have I have a ton of friends who are in stop motion. Probably more friends in stop motion than I have in um, in three D because I worked because uh, I went to school at. RIT and RIT is one of the, the bigger um, stop motion schools. Yeah, they have other stuff which you know I, I worked in into the three D uh, route, but there's a ton of uh, a ton of great stop motion animators came out of out of RIT, and um, a lot of them are, are friends from I still have there in, in a bunch of different studios, um, and the um, the like the the stop motion the world is both expansive yet so small <laughs> like like if you know a handful of people in stop motion mm-hmm. you can talk to almost anybody in, right. in the stop motion industry and they probably have come across them at some point hmm. um where it's similar in in vfx but vfx is a lot bigger um where like you have vfx animators uh you have uh stop motion animators and then you have 2d animators 2d animators that that's a pretty small uh, tight knit group mm-hmm. because there's not a lot of 2D animation anymore, which is it's a fucking crime. But yeah, um, the then you have uh, stop motion animators. They're a whole. They're they're very much a a fun bunch of people. Um, and then you have uh, VFX, and then 3D animators who do like regular character animation, like for like Disney and Pixar. Mm-hmm. Those people like who work in Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks. Um, they are a very separate group than than what i've worked in right um not that i like there's some crossover i've worked with some people who've worked at pixar um but uh, the vfx industry is is a very kind of um gangs yeah <laughs> disney seems like they like have their own their own group and yeah. then yeah pixar has their own group in-house right yeah yeah like the 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 um people who work at at disney and pixar and, and dreamworks not DreamWorks is not so much. I have I have actually a close friend who works at DreamWorks, um, and I know some people at, at, at Disney as well. But uh, there are it, it can get very clicky. Mm. Um, it's not <laughs> like like but they're they're really great artists. Not that, like they're bad people, but it's very there's a very specific mindset mm-hmm. yet to be to be uh, being a uh, Disney or DreamWorks animator. Um, and uh, it's I'm not. I'm not particular. Like I used to want to go into that, and mm-hmm. I was like, "That's really not kind of my path." Um, the people who do that, I admire them for mm-hmm. for the stuff they do because um, they they put in a wild amount of work uh, mm-hmm. for that that specific craft. Um, but I've kind of lent myself more into the fee effect side of things, where my hands are kind of 
in every pie. <laughs> like, <laughs> hello, yeah. like I'm going to hop into this thing and I can hop into this thing yeah. and bounce all over the place. Um, so I've got to work on a ton of stuff from like uh, commercials to movies to like even like some kid shows. Um, I've kind of, I've, I've bounced into, um, and not, not to say like those other animators can't do that as well. It's just a, it's a more narrow uh, group of people um, who are also very paid very well because mm. it's a very specialized craft to be as good as, as some of them are. Mm. So, um, yeah. How does how did you get started? How did you do? What did you just always want to be an animator? Did you were you a drawer? Were you a computer guy? Or how did it happen? I I and I always did art. I was yeah. I was always into art. Um, and then I was like, I want to go into to video games and stuff. And then. I went to went to college, and then I was like, um, one of my one of my professors was like, "You are good. Like you have you're not like you you have a tendency to, to do better with animation. Why don't you think about doing more in animation? Because mm-hmm. before I was like, oh, I'll do like character design stuff, like things like that. And uh, not that I'm I'm terrible at character design, but I just found that I had more of a a uh, I found more enjoyment in doing animation, and mm-hmm. I kind of just went down that rabbit hole afterwards um it didn't really kind of go towards uh video games as much anymore um and which i'm kind of glad i did because the video game industry uh is is rough <laughs> seems it <laughs> it is Just, rough um i yeah. i know people who who've all, who've it's similar to like <clears throat> people who do vfx and porn okay it's they it's only so so long <clears throat> you can you can be in there. like some people like have worked in in video games in some roles and they've done it for years and years and they enjoy it uh other people it is uh tiring long hours and can be absolutely like grinding down mm. like grind you down um and a lot of people end up just burning out way too quick which is a general mm-hmm. issue across the industry in general is, is burnout um there's burnout in vfx as well um but it's not to the the level that it's usually not to the level that video games are because they want to hit these specific release yeah. deadlines that are um, that people were like, oh, we want this game by this time or whatever. And there's but just not Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls will come out someday. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's they want a game at some time and they they try to force it. Uh, some studios have been good in the fact that they're like, hey, we're, we're mm-hmm. our, like the game is not done yet. Right. Um, where a lot of studios uh, have been like, we're just going to put this out there and then keep patching it till, till the end of time. I played Starfield. <laughs> yeah. So. And it took 10 years. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> so how is it? Yeah. So how is it different? Like, uh, the, is the skill set different or is it just uh, just different work culture? Different work culture. I mean, they spend a lot of money on video games, like more than movies. So yeah. You would yeah. Think it's, that- a, it's a different work culture. It's a very much like people like sleep in the studio kind of work culture. It's more of a computer cult work culture, right? That's like, that's like the whole yeah. Silicon Valley thing where they just work on it till they fucking drop. Yeah. Yeah. And in video games tend to be like that. And like I said, there's, there's some people who are like that in VFX and mm-hmm. there's some people who have, have been like that in VFX and animation. I know people who've done that. It's just a lot more prevalent in video games uh, because of how they want to hit di- deadlines. Um, because it's not the same thing as with movies. You can kind of shift a release date with a movie a little mm-hmm. easier and kind of uh, lengthen things out. Though, you know, there have been issues um, for years where they're like, no, we want this movie out now. Mm-hmm. You know, make it look pretty in the next two days. And it's like, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you don't smoke cigarettes. Because you know? <laughs> yeah. then you just have your full ashtray just like one right after the other and you're already putting in a 14 hour day with your fucking pixelated you know puppet dick yeah. and then you hand it in at the end of the week you're like done <laughs> it's done you know? i've had that have had that happen though i've where i've worked on something so long yeah, I was like, yeah. i don't give a shit just take it <laughs> uh, <laughs> end my suffering <laughs> uh, but you know it's it's uh it, it, I'll do that, and then I'll immediately be like, "No, give it back. I know it wasn't good enough." <laughs> <laughs> Is that a problem sometimes? Like uh, you can just keep tweaking it forever if you don't just yeah, say you're yeah. done. Where, where the the technical term is pixel fucking, <laughs> <laughs> where like the the uh, like especially with like uh, a client or uh, a producer, someone higher up, 
will constantly nitpick every tiny thing and constantly want you to redo it over and over again. Ah. And to the point where it then starts looking bad and uh, and they call it pixel fucking. Uh-huh. It's just they, they over criticize it to the point where like stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so um, at frame 200, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've had people like that where they're just like, hey, at like this, like frame 137, you see this thing blip in the background uh, but that thing's going to be like invisible anyway. So it doesn't matter. So it's like, what? And then why do you want me to fix it? Like, it's, <laughs> you're not going to see it in the frame. It's going to be chopped out of the frame. You know, why, why am I going to fix that? And so, you know, some people are like that. I think that's also just, you know, some people are just like, you know, have egos like, yeah. at any place. And they're like, oh, I need to justify my job. It's like, you're good at your job. You don't need to yeah. justify it by making my life miserable. It's bureaucracy. If you're good at your job, you never notice it's there. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I, but like there's, there's been issues where, um, I had mentioned it briefly to you, uh, not too long ago where we, uh, where I, I worked on, um, I worked on, on, uh, on Supergirl and, mm-hmm. uh, there was a, there was a thing that went around all over the internet about, uh, about, um, this, uh, this effect on. Uh, Martian Manhunter and they're like oh this looks really bad and all this other stuff and people made fun of it online and it was a big joke all over the industry it's like and but the thing is is I know the enemy worked on it uh-huh. he's a fantastic enemy he's a but the problem yeah. was is that there was a lot of like hey we need to get this thing out now oh. and then they're like oh we're gonna use this version he's <clears> like <throat> I can make a better version just give me like another hour or something like that and I can clean some of that and they're like no we're going to use it now huh. and in the end you know he gets kind of thrown mm-hmm. under the bus yeah it's his fault even yeah <laughs> so you know people uh, I've seen that happen with with a few other things where like you know I you know it's like oh I could have done more and then it goes out there and people are like wow that's a bad effect so I I'm not as critical about the artist when I see that in in a movie where I'll notice a bad effect, mm-hmm. I'm more critical to be like, "Hey, what did what did the uh, the client want from that, and why did they they approve that so quickly? Mm. They couldn't give that the artist because a lot of times you have these fantastic artists that end up putting subpar work that they didn't want out there, but the studio was like, "Oh, we want we want this thing out now." Yeah, ultimately the studio mm-hmm. looked at it and said, "Oh, this is good enough." Yeah, it's close enough. No one's gonna notice it. Well, you said that that happened to you. It well, it yeah, it did. It did happen to me on on one thing I did work with, um, where I was like, hey, you know, they're like, oh, can you give us like uh, the uh, like a kind of a, like a brief sketch version of this kind of essentially like a, a rough draft version, and mm-hmm. I cleaned the rough draft up a bit, mm-hmm. um, so it wasn't terrible. But then they're like, cool, we're gonna use that, and I was like, no. Don't <laughs> don't do that. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, we're just, we're, yeah, yeah. They're just like, oh yeah, that's good enough. And I'm like, but it's not though. Like I could I could do better. I mean, ultimately, it didn't look bad. It, like for for the scene, it was. Uh, it's just one thing I saw, it and I was like, I look back at it, and I'm like, I could have made that better. Right. Um, and I was planning to make that better. It wouldn't have taken me too much longer, uh, but because they wanted to see an update of it. Uh, and they're just like, all right, this update's good enough. And it happens to a lot of people mm-hmm. all the time in the industry, um, where they see an update and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. like we'll, we'll move that along. We want to, we want to get, you know, move on to the next scene. Which sometimes I can understand it because like there's scheduling and stuff like that mm-hmm. conflicts they don't want to uh, brush up against too. But there's other times where it's like there's no you could have given the artist another hour. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's an hour to make a better product? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fucking management. Dude. Now. Are you comfortable enough to be like, I do have one fuck up out there. Not the one you just mentioned. That's that's beyond you. But are you comfortable, comfortable enough to say, uh, I do have one, you know, <laughs> like piece of work out there that I notice it every single time I look at it. I'm like... I fucking hate the way I did the jeans on that guy, right? or some just something like that. Like, I have a couple. Uh, well, yeah. one, one, one. Because <laughs> as comedians, obviously we're super critical of our jokes. Everything I do sucks. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate myself. So do you have like you know I fucking I hate the way I did her nose or just something. <laughs> Like, do you uh, have, like, a thing where you're like, I fucking wish I didn't do that? <laughs> there, There is, there is, a, is yeah. some, uh, I think on Robot Chicken, there's a couple scenes that I've looked back and I missed some minor things in mm. the shot. 
Um, but it was very much like mm-hmm. it's, it's robot chicken. No one cares. And like that's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's what like that's what, what the, the that's what the producers are telling me. They're like, no one gives a shit. Like it's so small. It's not gonna. It's not mm-hmm. gonna be. You know, no one's gonna notice that that half frame where something's off. But I see it every time. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, you know, they're like, it's they're like it looks good, and it's in the jokes they'll read. So that's not. Don't don't stress over that. Um, the other mistake that I made, which I think is one of my funnier ones. That I that I point out every I point out every chance I get because it was actually a good mistake. Yeah, uh, was I accidentally um, working on Ant Man? I accidentally used uh, the wrong camera for uh, for something I was animating when the helicopter scene when they're they're fighting in the helicopter and Ant Man gets knocked out of the helicopter. And he's holding onto the seatbelt and he's like getting banged up against the side of the the helicopter. And there's a there's an angle that they use like a kind of a close up angle behind his feet where he's getting smashed against the, the helicopter. That angle was my work camera <laughs> that I accidentally rendered out and I oh, sent no. it and I didn't use the real camera and I noticed it like not long afterwards like oh no. Oh, no. And then they're like, "Oh, the director liked it, so we're going they're going to use that for the the movie." And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. It was it was a creative choice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, is this something that we could actually pull up and then we can just inch it along? And be like, there, there it is. I mean, if you pulled up the 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 helicopter scene in Ant Man when they're fighting, there is a there like is the a first Ant Man. Yeah, the first Ant Man. Really? Yeah. And I, I put it out every time when like it's on TV or something like that. It'll show up and be like, ah, I fucked that up, and then they loved it. <laughs> That's the best fuck up I've ever made. We don't make, we don't have, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Yeah, there you go. Bob Ross moment. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, that stuff kind of happens all the time. It's, it's, I feel like the. The the biggest thing that this industry has taught me was just kind of like the whole idea of not holding on to something so tightly that you can't let it be criticized. Um, I mean, I think that's just, you know, good life advice in general. But like um, there's a lot of times where I put a ton of work into something and then it's never used. Hmm. And it's not that that it was it was bad. It was just not right. For whatever they're just edited for time or yeah, part so, of the scene that was yeah they're like this this like I had I had done some stuff uh, on on the Avengers and that was like a whole sequence of cool stuff that I did and uh, and um, they're like uh, you know we we rewrote this scene so we're not going to be using this and it's like that's a bummer but like mm-hmm. it, I like uh, ultimately I understand it yeah. It's not like, oh, like, fuck that guy in particular. It was just the... <laughs> Why do you hate me? Yeah. It was just that the story didn't need that. Like, mm. it was, it looked cool, but, like, the story mm. ultimately didn't need that that part of the movie. They need to do more of that with their newer movies. <laughs> <laughs> so. Like the entire movie of the Eternals. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's okay. You're not missing it. Okay. Anything at all? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't watched much <clears throat> Marvel in years. Mm. I mean, like I, I watched the Spider-Man stuff. Because is there a Spider-Man. reason for that? The so not <laughs> not really. I mean, it's kind of like it's just more like uh, superhero fatigue for me. Gotcha. Um, Absolutely. You know, because there's still some fun stuff in there, but like I can't. It's hard for me <clears> to keep <throat> up with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm already a big Star Wars fan, so that's enough of my time being taken up. Mm. <laughs> so, Absolutely. what are your favorite Star Wars? What's that? What's your favorite Star Wars? What's looking good to you? What do you hate? Uh, now, current stuff? Yeah. Um, I mean, Andor. Andor is so fantastic. good. Andor would be good if you just took out the Star Wars and <laughs> put in Nazis. It would, just, it would be the same movie. Yeah. The, I, I, love, I, love, I love Andor. Um, I mean, I, love, I, like, I really enjoy the new Ahsoka series. I liked it as well. Um, I'm so glad. I was sad that that, that actor passed. Yeah, before yeah. Before they could do the Yeah, Ray sequel. Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because his, especially because his storyline was digging oh, into really God. some really cool stuff. I don't know if you've watched the Clone Wars. I have. Yeah. So like they're digging into the Mortis gods and everything. So yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And then he passed away. And I'm like, no. Fuck. Like, I, like you maybe we'll be animating him. <laughs> 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 I don't know what they're. I mean, I feel like they get, they gotta recast them somehow. I just don't know. I think they just rec- they should just recast it. Yeah. So there's um, other good actors, but that, yeah, he fucking played that so good. Yeah, he did. 
I like I yeah that whole series I, I was really into. Um, yeah. But I was also, but it's one of those series. It's like if if it's a lot better once you've seen the other mm. uh, like the other uh, Star Wars stuff like uh, Clone Wars and Rebels because then it makes more. You have sense to watch all like, the Filoni stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I love the right, Filoni stuff. So. Hundred <laughs> mm-hmm. percent. <laughs> You're like a uh, Labrador retriever, and he just called you a good boy, uh. and now you're just all like <laughs> talking about this Star Wars shit. <laughs> the whole room's like, <laughs> it was good. It was good. I like. Did you watch Star Wars Legends? The the, the animated stuff there. Yeah, that was fucking cool, right? Yeah. Did you watch those ones? No. No, they're shorts. They're shorts. They're really good. There's that. There's also Damn. Visions. Oh, did. Visions. That's what I mean. Well, because there, there's, the, there's a Legends one where yeah. they, they reanimated. They, they make animated versions of, of uh, moments in the movies. Yeah, that was cool. Um, which is cool. Uh, well, then there's also. Uh, was it? No, that was that was Destiny's. I can't remember. They got to fuck with these naming. The yeah. Naming uh, visions, though, is, is a fantastic series. Because the first one. They got, um, it was just a bunch of anime studios. Yeah, they just gave a bunch of studios, like, a little short thing and just, like, go yeah. with it. So, like, the th- first time, the first season was just, like, a bunch of studios around Japan. Yeah. And then the second season, they're like, let's par- grab studios from all around like the world. Like Ardman, that was so yeah, cool. Yeah, they got Ardman. Uh, they got a studio from Spain. They got a studio uh, from, I think, South Africa. Uh, one in India. It's a cool concept. So, yeah, so they just had, uh, you had studios from all over the place. I think they had one of the returning... They had a returning studio from Japan do another mm. short for them. Um, so I love, I love that. My favorite was that black and white samurai one. That was oh, yeah. so badass. Yeah, the Ronin? Yeah. Yeah. It was so badass. You think he's a Jedi that he whips out the red lightsaber. Yeah. Like, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I have a, the audio book that I've actually been going through. It's oh, really? The whole, full audio book of the, of the Ronin. It's like extended. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I read all the extended shit when I was a teenager. And it's like, it's, 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 I don't know. Yeah, this is this is more just kind of a side thing. It's not like yeah. main canon stuff. And I was like, I, they gotta get stop doing main canon stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I'm a big fan of of the stuff that Floney does, but mm-hmm. then outside of that, I've not. Yeah, yeah. He gets it. Yeah, yeah. And they they made him the the head creative guy there. Right. So basically, everything now, everything, uh, which I hopefully means that everything at, at Lucas is gonna be a lot you know, tighter. Uh, because uh, he's now the head creative guy, so anything that they make has to go through him, mm-hmm. has to go through his approval, and which is good because he probably understands uh, Star Wars the best outside of George Lucas. Yeah, he he worked with George Lucas for years on Clone Wars, mm-hmm. and like knows all the lore from him. Well, that's how I watched Clone Wars. My kids watched Clone Wars, and I sat there watching. I was like. This is really good. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a kids show. <laughs> yeah, no, and that show like it's gets really dark. It gets really. There is a. There is a. For for a children's show, there is a wild amount of decapitation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there should be more blood in Star Boy, Wars. our friend Hooney's gonna jizz in his pants when he watches this episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you ever want to work on that sort of? Oh, stuff. I would love yeah. to work on Star Wars stuff. If, yeah. I, if I got a chance to work on any kind of Star mm-hmm. Wars stuff, I would, I would absolutely jump for it. What would you like to do? Like those main movies, one of those animated ones? Like, I you right. honestly anything? Yeah, I would, I would work on anything if it's if it's through Lucas. If it wasn't just some like some side project thing. Oh yeah. Whatever. But if it was if it was something that Lucas was doing, and you know, especially if I got to work for ILM. Oh yeah, it's wild. But like you know, that's that's a pretty narrow group of people who can get an ILM. Oh, right on. <laughs> but That's uh, one of the gangs. Yeah. That's, that's the top gang. Well, e- even so, like, ILM, from what I've, I've heard, because I've known a lot of people who've worked with ILM, and they're apparently great to work with. They're mm. not they're not nearly as clicky as other, other places. Oh, that's they're very, cool. They're very great to their, their employees. They're, uh, a lot of people I've, who I've known who've worked for them uh, have gotten more work from them on and off um, because it's kind of just like, hey, if you're not... Like they they just don't like people being weird about Star Wars. Oh. Like like if you if you like Star Wars, they they like that. <laughs> if you like Star Wars way too much <laughs> and you're really weird about it, they do not like that. That makes sense. They they will be like, hey, maybe fucking like lighten up. I Stop don't... stalking the boss. Yeah yeah. No, you know what's cool as hell. You got to see that clip of Freddie Prinze Jr. Mm. just kind of going off on oh, Star Wars oh, yeah. fans. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's just like, there's no great Jedi. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, for oh, like, I did see that. I did see just that. Just for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. 
And he's just like, you guys are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that was a little harsh, but I understand his general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes they yeah. need a fucking big spanking on the ass. Yeah. Because honestly, they are one of the most toxic fan bases oh, out I, there. I am aware. I think it's either Star Wars or Tool, the biggest douchebag <laughs> fan base. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it is. It is. That's that's a rough couple of people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, any video online, yeah. it's just like they're just bitching. Yeah, bitching yeah. about something. Yeah, oh my God. I, I like I'm. I have my qualms with Star Wars, but like I know people who are just what? they 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 watch Star Wars. Just I feel like out of self hatred. They yeah. were so mean to that little boy. Oh, he fucking, he <laughs> fucking <laughs> quit, and yeah. like he he became like a fucking drug addict and shit. Yeah, yeah. They were so fucking mean to him. Yeah, the the kid who played young Anakin. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. Um, oh, what's his Poor name? guy. Reed or whatever. Yeah. Um. He, uh, he, I feel bad for him. Him and the guy who played uh, Jar Jar. Yeah, but he had his redemption, he baby. He did have his redemption. Though. Fucking was you, dude. And I think, I think what happened was is that uh, a lot, like, I think a lot of the people gave them shit over the, the prequels were old Star Wars fans. Mm. And uh, when the prequels came out, and then, but the prequels were made for, like, a, a younger generation. So, okay. yeah. Once yeah. the rest of Best us. That's their excuse, but come on, trade negotiations. Younglings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, what, what, but like I think I think well, a lot of people have uh, uh, <laughs> thank you John <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah a lot of people do have like a nostalgia for it so I think that helped a lot um, mm. and I think a lot of people kind of generally understood what George Lucas was trying to do especially after Clone Wars happened that kind of like reset a lot of things mm. it's like oh contextualize a lot of stuff yeah um Especially with the new stuff with with Hayden Christensen coming back. Oh, well, that was cool. Oh yeah. I mean, so that's what was cool about Clone Wars. It like deepened the whole thing. Yeah. Although he sure does turn evil kind of fast in the movie. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I'm sad. Fuck these kids. Yeah, but like the the <laughs> the, uh, the TV show kind of contextualized all yeah. of it through like because you you don't realize like how compressed all that time is in the yeah. movies, and then you then you have the Clone Wars, which takes that time and you know spreads it out. Right. Those, <laughs> seven seasons uh so you could actually see you know anakin kind of slowly turn into the dark side uh, kind of he's just getting ptsd <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i i let's see obi-wan i don't know it was too slow i like the fight at the end you didn't like it it was okay but uh, it was okay but the fight with him and vader was fucking badass I yeah liked, i liked that hmm. there, there was a lot of cool stuff yeah um, they had uh, they they kind of made other references in in Obi Wan, but yeah, there was some slow. It kind of slowed. Little girl Aunt Leia was weird. I I didn't oh. mind her that much personally. Fuck these kids. <laughs> I like it better than weird looking Leia at the end of Rogue One. I'd like to see one of those animated points. <laughs> She's just like hope. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she she br- briefly looks really good and then briefly looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's um, all within within like the span of like you know 16 frames <laughs> we'll have four special editions where they fix it a little bit more but change the entire movie uh, yeah, yeah. I, that's I, what I, I want to see Star Wars do I want them to bring back the original 1977 fucking hand shoots first yeah. Han shoots first I know why'd you say it like that Han I don't know you and only fucking um, Lando yeah call him Han because I'm a Lando file you think so yeah <laughs> And it's only when he's getting like his shit fucked up by Chewie, he's like, "We could save Han," <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like he fucked up his name. <laughs> it's like he's the only one that can get away with it, though. He's yeah. cool. He's out, though. Fucking Billy the Woods, it's cool. Fucking right, he was. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I always, I still want to see his uh, his version of Two Face. Oh yeah, because <laughs> because we, we we got we got that yeah. we got that teaser from from right. the uh, the first the nineteen eighty nine Batman yeah and we never got and they to never see followed it up face. yeah the bummer fuck motherfuckers <laughs> you know what I I also uh, am very like sometimes interested in uh, how things would look had it been the original casting or like say movies that could have mm. been made but infamously were discarded like the superman uh lives oh know, yeah tim burton superman you the jaredowski tune yeah with the fucking giant spider shit like that you know mm-hmm. yeah, but uh 
I think to me, I think it would have been um, probably the most mind blowing to see Django with Will Smith. That would be interesting because I think that's just. I mean, like, to have a clone be like Will Smith. It'd be like that'd be weird, huh? <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think Tamara Morrison was a good choice. Yeah, Django. Oh, oh, you're talking about Django and Django. <laughs> I thought it was Jango Fett. I thought it was Jango Fett. Oh, because Star, Star Wars, Wars is still in the ether. My yeah. bad. Yeah. No, Jango <laughs> Unchained originally was going to be. No, Tamora Morrison is pretty cool. He's a Tar- great actor. Tarantino's Jango. No. But he's getting his Jango's mixed up. <laughs> we're gonna call this talking ep- about DJ. We're going to call this episode Too Many Jangos. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though. The thumbnail, this guy's doing it, okay? <laughs> you have till Thursday. <laughs> Instagram sized. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I think Django Unchained with Will Smith that probably would have looked crazy as hell, wouldn't it? You know, I think it would probably would have sucked. Yeah, I mean, we got yeah. Wild Wild West. So yeah, w- yeah, I think it would have been terrible. Then. I don't Actually, know. Will Smith's a good actor. Just I, I know, but I think, like it's I don't not know, Jamie Fox. Just, he doesn't have the same swagger. Yeah. Is he? Is he a good he, actor? Yeah, he, pretend, he? he pretended. Why? Because he fucking cried once, you know, and Uncle Phil hugged him. <laughs> Ollie was good. Oh, my dad loved me. Ollie was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, I robot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best one of them all. The animation of that one was great. <laughs> I am legend. I am legend. I actually do like that movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that part where it, uh, it shows uh, the mannequin he talks to. And then all of a sudden he sees a downtown. And then for like a brief shot, you can see it like turn its head mm-hmm. slightly. And it's just, it's creepy as fuck, you know. So, I thought so. Mm-hmm. So, is it always you want to... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's very yeah, deep. Yeah, that was a good story, Will. Anyway. Yeah. It's very deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golf, golf clap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck you, girl. girl. A... <laughs> Hold on, I'll do a Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't beat up the mics. They're expensive. <laughs> Every time I see someone drop a mic down, I'm like, fucking don't. Don't right. drop the mic. <laughs> They're expensive. So, do you always want to work on like other people's stuff, or do you ever see yourself like making your own like <gasps> thing? I don't know. Like, I don't. I actually don't know how it works. Like. He wants to work Dude, with like, us. <laughs> yeah. Aboriginal Outlaw Studios. Yeah. I, I've never... Get on it. No, I've never wanted to kind of... I, I Like, at one point, I was like, I want to make my own stuff. And then I got into this business, and I was like, that sounds like a st- ball of stress. Mm. Um, not that it couldn't be fun, but, like, you know, where I am, I'd rather work on cool projects. I'd rather, I'd rather look at, like, things that I want to work on, work with studios that, that work on, you know, cool things and... And kind of uh, join in on that, so that mm-hmm. I can be like, "Hey, I worked on that cool, you know, as part mm-hmm. of this bigger, cool project." Um, but the, I don't know. There's some people who do go into that and make their own stuff. Um, I actually have a friend, uh, a few friends who started a studio um, uh, called Apartment D, mm-hmm. and they are a uh, they're a stop motion studio. Um, most of them had like come from had worked at at, uh, at Super Buddy at one point working on Robot Chicken, mm-hmm. but they've also worked on other stuff. So they have like this really kind of fun blend mm-hmm. of, of stuff. And they've worked on a bunch of, uh, a lot of commercial work. They've done stuff uh, with uh, with Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. I think, I think Cartoon Network. But, um, but they've in, in like done a bunch of advertising um, as well. That's all, you know, for like toys and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think they're working on a, working on a um, movie right now, movie or series. Um, and you know they've they've kind of really made it pretty far, uh, just doing their own stuff. And you know they're having they're having a good time with that, and you know making cool stuff. But uh, I see I see what they do, and I'm like I can't <laughs> too I much work. I, I don't have that kind of I don't have that kind of mindset mm. to to work with do what they did. Uh, I commend them for that because they they make really cool stuff. But I can't do it myself <laughs> oh yeah so you like the collaboration too it seems so collaborative the whole thing like there's no dude yeah. in charge yeah i mean you know there's like it, i guess it depends on the project mm-hmm. this is a very project to project kind of thing mm-hmm. um how they like there's different studios have different kind of hierarchies how they work with things uh depending on if you're working with a studio that's doing 
the project kind of like when I was working at at, uh, at Stupid Buddy working on Robot Chicken that was that studio so there's only them we're not working with another client um, it's just the, their own in-house uh, show um, so you know you're you're only kind of beholden to the studios kind of stuff you're working with everybody there mm-hmm. so everyone there you're not you're not doesn't go outside of that mm-hmm. uh, whereas um, with uh, with things like with like super mansion that one uh, that was with Brian Cranston and he had a you know team mm-hmm. uh, that we were working <clears throat> with separately we're uh, creating that creating that sh- TV series um, so it's it's it all it's kind of varies from mm-hmm. one place to another Right on. I'm gonna have to check out this super mansion. Yeah, me too. I never heard of it. But I like Brian Cranston. I do love Brian Cranston, yeah, he's awesome. He plays uh he plays like basically a uh a reverse version of Superman. Instead of from space he comes from a uh, a a civilization underground. Mm. And he's still like super strong. But it's also like geriatric Superman, so it's like <laughs> Superman, but he's like eighty years old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, uh, Keegan Michael Key plays uh, plays like their version of Captain America, uh, <laughs> where uh, where it's like <laughs> like kind of like a realistic version of Captain America, where he's mildly racist, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just very old like nineteen forties mindset. <laughs> so like the like, boys. Uh, yeah, exactly. Boy. Just like Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll check that out. Yeah. That was uh, this was uh, 2015. That show came out. Oh wow, super. Yeah, they they have a few few seasons of it. I worked on the first season. There's so much stuff now. Yeah. You ever watch Love, Death, and Robots? Yes, I have what? friends who worked on Love, Death, Thoughts? and Robots. Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I love the series. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have I have some friends who worked on it. Um, they worked on some stuff with uh, Studio Blur. Um, Blur is is. Their stuff is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Like, like most studios will be like, "Hey, this is our final version," and mm-hmm. they'll be like, "That's the rough draft." Here. Oh wow! So they're the ones who like. Um, I don't know if you saw the episode with the giant dead giant on the on the uh, on the beach. I think so. Um, they're like mining it or something. Yeah, there's yeah, there's like a dead giant <clears throat> who's on a beach, and everyone's like walking around it and stuff. Yeah. Um, I had a friend who worked on that, and he when he worked on it, he was just like. You know, he's like working on something, and he's like, "Yeah, I think this is like a final." He's like, "That's a good start," and they're like, "What do you mean it's a good start?" And they're like, "Yeah, no, like you need to refine this way more," and like because they they get really really in depth, but all their their all their stuff is wild. That's what makes them like a prestige kind of thing, right? Yeah, they're 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 a studio. Like if you if you go to if you're getting to like any kind of if you're hiring Blur for anything, you want just the best stuff Mm -hmm. you're 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 not paying for something quick you're paying for quality right so it's going to be expensive and it's going to take a bit but you're going to get a phenomenal product at the end of it um and that's kind of how how blur always works yeah um so they do a lot of stuff with uh with um video game cinematics Mm. or stuff like that or other advertisements Mm -hmm. Um, they don't do a lot of stuff that's, uh, they don't do a ton of movies work, Mm -hmm. um, just because of the fact that movies usually have a tighter turnaround, uh, tighter than, than blur is usually Mm -hmm. going to, to, to accept, Hmm. um, because they want to keep a very strict level of quality. They're not going to dumb down their stuff so that they can get on the hottest new effects heavy movie. Yeah. 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 I keep thinking Marvel. I don't know why. (laughs) I know every movie has effects now. (laughs) Yeah. Like even even like dramas have effects now. Just oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah look at the Irishman. Mm. Mm. You know, what do you think of that? Like you know the de aging shit they did for that. Uh it looks good. Uh, generally, I mean for for what the the where the the technology is, it looks decent. Um, I thought it only looked good in one part. If I'm being honest, I didn't watch the whole movie because the it's rest three hours it, long. It was yeah. too long. It's four yeah, hours. It's long. Four hours. Like it was. I saw the, I saw the runtime and I was like, nah. There's only one shot where I'm like, that looks incredible. The rest I can tell it's, you know, it's VFX. Yeah. And it's the shot with uh, younger Joe Pesci, hmm. where he comes home covered in blood and his wife is like, take your mm-hmm. clothes off, go upstairs, take a bath. Mm-hmm. You know? And that was it because for a brief second I was like, holy fuck, he looks like, like Home Alone era yeah. fucking mm-hmm. Joe Pesci. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but you get you know. Uh, 
Robert De Niro and uh, Al Pacino, they're supposed to be like 40-something. Yeah, yeah. And they're both moving around like... <laughs> yeah, they move real stiff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you like their steak? <laughs> yeah, I, I can get you a good steak. <laughs> like that. And it's just like, you can tell he's like 80. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of... Uh, just that one brief shot, I was like, that looks fucking incredible. So Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, I, there, there's a lot of movies. I, it's, it's funny for me. It's like I don't watch a ton of movies nowadays. Um, I think it's just, especially facts-heavy movies, I think yeah. it's just from looking at it all the time. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, I want to fucking read a book. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And my, my wife's the same way. It's, yeah. We, yeah. we both work in this industry so much. That like like hey do you want to go watch this you know newest superhero movie or newest like super effects movie and we're like I could fucking care less right mm-hmm. now I can't watch like my eyes are bleeding from staring at this stuff <laughs> day in and day out mm-hmm. like not that the not that the movie isn't gonna be good it's just yeah. the fact that like you see it all the time and you and it just puts you back into work mode mm-hmm. and you're like I just want to relax so I have like a handful of TV shows that I watch as just like. Uh, that I'll watch that I've been watching for years that I've rewatched a bunch of times. Oh, right on. Um, so you go back to stuff. Yeah, I go back to stuff all the time. Like yeah. Clone Wars is one of them. Oh, Clone, Wars. It's just, it's just, Clone Wars is one of them. I think that and like Psych. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll watch through those, uh, watch through that show like a bunch of times because it's something that I've seen so many times I can just turn my brain yeah. off. Mm-hmm. In it, but it's still, you know, some, like, it's still entertaining, but I don't have to, uh, I don't have to think about uh, a new series or whatever or whatever new coming out um every once in a while i get in that mood where i'm like hey i want to see this movie i've mm-hmm. been looking out for like the like the the, the recent spider-verse movie yeah i was all that was about cool. that, that was yeah. cool um and I'm, I'm into those it's just i can't look i can't do it all the time mm. i can't like oh, i'm gonna spend my weekend just watching new movies that i want to catch up on it's mm-hmm. just i can't you mm-hmm. know after you're, you're sitting in you're sitting in that kind of mindset all the time uh, it's hard to it's hard to pull your yourself away because then you're you're because then I'm looking at stuff in the mindset of someone who works right um, on that kind of thing and I'm looking at I'm looking at the wrong things instead of paying attention <laughs> to the movie. You're like that could have been better. I could have I could have done that better. Yeah. Are you, are you gonna, someday you're gonna be like whenever I drive through the city, my father will be like, I worked on that roof. I worked on that roof. I worked on that roof. And you'll be yeah. like, oh, I did that shot. Oh, I, my company worked on that shot and. Yeah, look at that shot. Hey kids, look at this shot. This thirty seconds what was us. Yeah, and, and like I, there was, cause I, cause uh, I saw Oppenheimer when that came mm-hmm. out, and I, uh, both my wife and I had the same kind of general reaction where we're watching the movie and we're watching some effects. And we're like, how did they do that effect? Mm-hmm. It's stuff, and you, you know, you're just trying to you 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 can't pull yourself out of mm-hmm. that thing. I mean, I still enjoyed Oppenheimer. I still mm-hmm. like the movie altogether. It's still a really good movie, but like there's still a lot to Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. that i can't separate also the fact that uh that uh he's like oh i didn't use any cg effects Uh, that's horseshit yeah (laughs) (laughs) there there's actually cg artists who have who did work on that and they Uh came out afterwards and like hey you didn't credit us in this movie because you wanted to say everything was practical (laughs) and it wasn't (laughs) uh no so there's there's sometimes where, there's a few things that we were all like they they should have used CG for that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what's funny is that because he has that reputation, a lot of people are like, wait, he's making a movie about the atomic bomb. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what the fuck's he gonna do? To that? He's gonna set up an atomic bomb, motherfucker. Yeah, Look what North Korea. <laughs> yeah, when, when I saw when I saw that that part when when the when the, the Trinity bomb did go off, I was like, he should have used effects. You yeah, should use 3D effects for that because. <laughs> It's not that it wasn't, you know, cool or whatever, but it's like that's obviously a small explosion because mm-hmm. you could see like parts of the of the thing that they blew up yeah. kind of flying around. And you're like, yeah, it's cool, but like an um, actual atomic bomb yeah. would have vaporized all that stuff. Right. Like you wouldn't have seen debris flying They should have used a real atomic bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, not a big one. Just <laughs> like, like, like Hiroshima size. Like just couple kill a ton. I mean, come on now. Let's, let's fucking do it. It probably costs less than the CG. <laughs> There's got to be some uh, weapons grade, you know, uranium sitting around somewhere. Come on, let's fucking do it for a movie. This is America, motherfuckers. 
<laughs> See, he's got the mentality of like a coked out movie exec, but he doesn't yeah. do cocaine. He's just trying to pull you out of work. <laughs> he's like, fuck him, get the bomb, get a real bomb. Get Record Kim Jong on the phone. He's like, zoom in, fucker, center it, drop it, now. Boom. <laughs> 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 Did you get the shot? <laughs> Anyone who isn't blind, please come into work. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Are you nice. to Dune? What's that? Are you to Dune? Ugh. Dune? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. How Dune. dare you? I tried, I tried to, and I'm just... <laughs> I haven't watched... It is so fucking boring. <laughs> it's so fucking boring. Wait till the second boring. one comes out and watch them together. Oh, that's when it watch fucking picks up? It's gonna be fucking awesome. He's gonna get run a fucked. sandworm. Get He's gonna fucked. fight a jihad. It's gonna it, be it, great. It picks up at hour 374. What, what, what Will said. <laughs> yeah, get fucked. Yeah. I'm with Will on this one. Yeah? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> his, his other movie, was it Blade Runner 2049? That yeah. was boring as fuck, too. I, I did like Blade Runner, though. I oh. did, too. The original... <laughs> I like both of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I like the 1980s Dune as well. Yeah. With a fucking sting and a G-string? Yes. Which, which, version, of, which were, uh, version of Blade Runner, though? The original Blade Runner do you like? <laughs> Just several versions. Of I know. There's like five. Yeah. <laughs> what I saw. Because <laughs> there's the final cut, the director's cut. There's the, the screen cut. Mm-hmm. So. What they got to do is they got to stop because Coppola did that shit with Apocalypse Now. Mm-hmm. He kept like putting out like the final, final, final cut. Yeah. And it's just like, we you just fucking stop, dude? He was pixel fucking. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Call <Hey>. back. <laughs> <laughs> Someone paid attention. Give him his gold, give him his gold star sticker. <laughs> Put it on his phone. Uh, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, no, I thought the the 2049 Blade Runner, I thought that shit was boring as fuck, you know. <laughs> I thought it was, you know what, I, I thought it was pretentious. Because, you know what, the cinematography and the effects are beautiful. But the thing is, they do it too much. You know what it was? It was like that movie Her. You know, the Joaquin yeah, Phoenix, yeah, yeah. and he fucking has phone sex with an AI voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and people are just like, but it's a love story. I got bored with that movie. Exactly! <laughs> it's boring as shit! <laughs> like, I get the idea. Ooh, what, what will AI mean for this? For yeah, this? and they're just Forget like, oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Very deep. It's just fucking cinematic masturbation. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to stick around for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking bored. Unless it's Pornhub. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with porn up. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not gonna see wow. your buddy's work on fucking pirates triple X. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, no fucking CGI skeletons with titties for me. <laughs> nope. You good out. old just good old shit on Twitter. Yep. Just that nice five second clip that repeats. It's all you need. Until I'm done. It's all you need. <laughs> Like a man, like a real man. Yeah. Fucking right. <laughs> I can imagine the rest. <laughs> I'll fill in the blanks. It's like I don't need to see when she goes home. I just, I know she go home safe. That's my favorite part when she goes home crying. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Gets her fifty bucks and regrets life. Fifty bucks. <laughs> The animators get paid better than the actresses. <laughs> Holy yeah. uh, Well, thank you so much for finally getting your ass up here. I know. Coming back home, coming on to my show. I, I love it. Definitely, I want you back. Uh, we got to make some more money to get you back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But no, it's uh, maybe maybe summertime. We'd love to have you back. You think you'll be back uh, for the summer? Yeah, maybe sometime. Uh, I guess it depends. I, I have a bunch of stuff coming up this summer, so I'm going to be in Italy for a bit. In summer, in summer. Italy? Yeah. So, uh, Well, that's just because uh, cause we have a friend who's getting okay, married there. Okay, good. I thought you were about to get shot. <laughs> I thought that was one of those things you can't talk about. The Gamora just I'm going to Italy for what? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, uh, no. We we have a friend who's getting married there. Wow. Yeah. So she... see, he can afford to just go to Italy. Yeah. No, they're they're partly paying for some of that. So. That's oh, okay, good. That's they're... what happens when you don't have eight kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you don't have eight children and you fucking have your priorities straight. <laughs> I don't know if I have my priorities straight. <laughs> He's like, I got that, I got that puppet dick money, motherfucker. I'm going to Italy. <laughs> no, no, we got my, my wife got uh, one of our friends is getting married and. Uh, my wife's going to be in the wedding party. So they're just oh. like, oh, come to Italy. And well, I mean, we're going to pay for the flights. But then we're like, uh, well, if we're going to be in Italy, we'll just stay there longer. Well, that makes sense. So, you know, Fucking we're going right. to be there for, for like a, a week. And then we're like, you know, we never actually had like a actual honeymoon after we got married. So let's just fucking you know, take a train around Italy. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, so we're going to go it. around Italy. Uh, I have a, which it's be nice because I have a aunt and uncle who actually are, are just moved to Italy. Um, just outside of Venice, so we're just gonna whoop, all the way. Very to cool. There. Yeah. So, that's that's gonna be our, our summer plans. I don't know anything around that, but that's gonna be most of my my month of June. Mm. Awesome. Well, you know, I really hope when you get to Italy, the pizza is good. We'll send <laughs> some stickers. It was, it would suck if it was terrible. <laughs> You're just like, this is fucking trash. The yeah. fuck? Please go to Italy, order pizza and spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. all I'll eat. <laughs> yeah. And when they give it to you and it doesn't look American, push it back like fucking do it right. <laughs> you know? What the fuck is this? What? USA! So, USA! <laughs> when the fuck does spaghetti have fish in it, you <laughs> motherfucker? This is why he beat you in the Second World War. <laughs> Well, yeah, man. Either before Italy or after, we'd love to have you back. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely love to. Be but back yeah, here. come back when uh, we can smoke some meat. <laughs> yeah, and there you go. All right, fellas, uh, this was good. Uh, mm-hmm. Any more parting thoughts? No, that's cool. Uh, did you say everything you wanted to say about the SAG after uh, thing that happened? Uh, support your unions. <laughs> I guess that, that's that's it. That's it. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think. A lot of that stuff is kind of who's started working out with with SAG and, and uh, the writers. Uh, now it's just coming up with the artists. Uh, I'm also very invested in that because I am an artist. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's very much just you know support your, your unions. So hopefully we can, so we can keep doing what we do and you don't have to look at uh, AI generated garbage. That's right. We support unions, the real ones, though, not public service unions. No, fuck the people. <laughs> fuck the government. No, no, the police yeah. and the teachers. Fuck them. But like the real ones, the workers, the technicians, the you know the real working people. <laughs> you know, it is really sad that you know this is an obvious no brainer, but the fact that uh, like half an industry had to go you know toe to toe. You know, for these rights, for this. You know, it's just kind of like, that's kind of fucking weird, right? Yeah. And the, the, the good thing, though, is there are some studios uh, like A24. Mm-hmm. Um, they they agreed to uh, the writers and the actors' demands immediately. Yeah. Um, they But they are a part of the, the main uh, AMPTP, which is like the, the, the big studios. The kind corporate. Of, yeah. Giants. They're, yeah. They're, that's their kind of group thing. But the, the smaller... But still, big independent studios like A twenty four, they agreed to all those terms, um, which also kind of helped me stay afloat because my studio worked on some oh. of their stuff. Um, we were, really? Yeah, we uh, worked on recently uh, the Iron Claw. The, uh, I loved Iron movie. Claw. I didn't see it yet. I want to see it. Get your fucking ass and go see it right now. <laughs> it wasn't at the. It wasn't there this weekend. Fucking pirated. <laughs> I was, I was gonna Son wait. of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I was, then apologize to him because he pirated it. I was going to wait till it come out on streaming, but. It's like, Adam, I'm sorry I saved 20 bucks. I can fire up the old BitTorrent. I can just go load transmission. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, that, but that stuff, that stuff kind of kept us afloat because those, those people kind of understood the, the general idea of like what, what this kind of stuff means to us. So, uh, but in terms of the big studios, it's very much, you know, support your unions. Uh, you know, right now it's kind of a rough time for everyone in the industry. Not even just um, the the writers, mm. uh, actors, and, and artists. All the people who are involved with that stuff too, because when some one of them kind of stops, it just ripples through the rest of mm-hmm. the industry and affects the rest of us. So we kind of have to hold strong too, so they can make sure they get what they want, and that'll kind of reverberate back to us. So it was already the people sleeping on fucking piles of money. 
mm-hmm. that were dragging their feet the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's usually the, the way it is. motherfuckers. Usually the way it is. The motherfuckers, <laughs> man. All right. All right. I'm not watching anything unless it's from A24. <laughs> In fact, I want them to re- revive some of the old fallen, you know, movie studios. You know, MTV movie studio, fucking Orion, shit like that. Shit that's been dead for years. I'll bring it back. Trust. That's all I'm pictures. watching. <laughs> Give me that, that, that Pegasus flying. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker. <laughs> It's like, where am I to that guy, huh? Eh? Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to find us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Keep an ear open for Sage Against the Machine. Hey, I said that right this time. Mm-hmm. And hopefully Women's Dance will be back in the studio soon. But, hey, you got at least, what, seven, eight episodes you can enjoy on yeah. YouTube. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for tuning in. I am Sugar Bear. Johnny B. I'm Joshua. Thank you so much for coming here today, Mr. Adam Oaks. Thank you for having me. All right. Hold on.